Hi, I'm Alex Paul, and I'm here today at the Public Tech Connect event with Vikram Gupta. He's the Senior Vice President and GM of IoT Processors over at Synaptics, and uh, we're going to talk about edge computing and AI. But, you know, edge computing is really, really exploding right now, isn't it? It is, Alex. I mean, you know, this is all driven by, you know, the whole wave of IoT and digitalization. I mean, we, we all know that digitalization is sort of like sweeping across many industries and so forth. And IoT is sort of like, you know, become more mainstream than what it has been in the past. But one big thing that is happening is also that, you know, with the advent of talk around AI, AI coming into the IoT is actually inflecting a lot of the adoption of edge in the context of AI IoT. But then again, Vikram, if you think about it, AI is almost a logical extension of edge computing. The more you're trying to put power out, logic out at the edge, AI should follow along as a matter of course, shouldn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, it's, a, it's actually a really good way that you mentioned it because the way I think about it is that you've got all these things out there. These things have to become more intelligent. It's a natural evolution, right? And we've all been through it as humans <laughs> over a number of years. But this is rapidly accelerating in the age of machines, in a sense. And so, yes, I totally agree with you that, uh, you know, there's going to be more of this. Now, the way I look at it is there's almost like two bins for AI. There's the good AI for stuff that we need, regulating systems and ensuring that um, complex electronic systems function in an optimal fashion and thing. And then you got the shady stuff, the, 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 the chat GPT and the deep fakes and all of that other stuff. But the nice thing about AI and IoT is that they're very straightforward applications. You know, you're using the, the, the AI to manage the IoT device. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think, so what, the way I look at AI in the context of the IoT is that there are, there are a couple of ways uh, you can actually see the benefit of AI. One is you have a regular IoT device, but it's more intelligent. So it's sort of operating better under the so it's almost contextually aware of what it needs to be doing so it does things in a better fashion for the same kind of functions it's used to doing and then there's this class of applications where you the ai is very visible right and it's it's more a function of you know uh what ai can bring as an added feature to an existing product so we look at it in, in both ways. One thing I do want to say is you, you mentioned chat GPT as uh, something that's on the, the bad side of things. The gray, uh, the gray. The gray, the gray, let's say the gray. Um, I think actually that there's going to be a version of uh, LLMs on the edge, which will actually enhance the usability of devices on the edge. So for instance, think about like if you got a streaming box you know, you know, you and you want to plug it into your TV or something. What if you could talk to it and tell it like, okay, hey, how, you know, I've connected it, but it's not really working right now. What do I do? And it gives you a suggestion. That's a very useful thing to help people who are not very tech savvy to connect something which is tech oriented to improve their lives, right? And it's a, it saves a service call to the company because you are able to actually solve the problem instead of picking the phone and calling someone and spending money. Now, when you think about it all, is uh, your solution set, right? How, how are you integrating the AI into your solution set and offering it to the audience? That's a great question. I mean, I think one of the things that we are doing as a supplier in the IoT space is we are taking a very fresh look at the edge. And we have the benefit of sort of being new entrants in the space uh, on the back of a history of AI in our products. What we are saying is we want to take all that AI knowledge that we have and incorporate it into processors and connectivity and offer intelligent IoT solutions. So we recently announced um, at Embedded World um, a line of processors, uh, edge AI IoT processors under the umbrella of Astra. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we, the, the, the very f the first um, uh, member of that family, which is high-end processors that actually power Linux boxes, you know, we announced it in Embedded World and we're very happy to have won a Best in Show award there, right? And so there was obviously something about our approach and how we're trying to make AI easy to incorporate in the edge, essentially into IoT systems that actually resonated with the folks at the show. Got it. So now, uh, Vikram, it's a family of processors. 
Are there any specific application spaces that they are specifically conducive for, or are they one size fits all? They can address a lot of different applications. They are meant to be uh, um, applicable to a broad range of applications, but what we are noticing is that the attach of AI is more pronounced in certain applications versus others. So for instance, you can think of security applications where AI actually could be, you know, it could actually make the product a lot better where you have a security camera at home or whatever and, you know, it's able to detect packages and stuff, but you're doing it at the edge instead of sending the image back to the cloud. So it's that kind of a thing. Or you have a wearable which is, you know, essentially aware that you as a user are in the midst of doing something so it adjusts to what you're doing and gives you relevant data so those there are certain applications where we are seeing more adoption but our products are meant to be widely applicable and each one will have each of these applications and applications will have their own attach rates on how fast they grow very cool so now vikram um are there any other aspects of these processes that you'd like to emphasize for our audience? Yeah, so firstly, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, we announced our high-end MPUs. We are in the process of sampling our high-end MCUs, which are going to be much more targeted to power-optimized applications. And the way we have architected it, it's a very novel approach, which is, uh, we are offering a uh, we are offering intelligence at different power levels. So if you're in a if you're in a highly conscious power state, you offer a certain kind of intelligence. When you have more flexibility, you crank up your performance and or offer another layer of intelligence. So we are making those kind of introductions from a silicon standpoint. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is you've got all the silicon. How do you take it and incorporate? software and models into the silicon, right, to make it do the, the stuff that you want it to do. There we are taking a very customer-friendly approach. We are, we are sort of trying to visualize the customer journey that, you know, one may go through. And depending on the experience level, you adapt, you know. So the, what we are seeing, for instance, is at the very high end, when you, where you uh, high end of experience level in terms of AI, for the IoT, there are companies and developers within those companies who are extremely aware of what they want to do. So we work with them at a certain level. But at the other end of the extreme, you see companies that just want a canned product. They take that canned product and they add it to their systems and they make it a smart system. And in the middle, there's a whole range. Like you said, gray. There's a whole bunch of gray in the middle. And so what we try to do is we try to actually um, make it easier for even those folks to act, adopt models that they may have, refine it in a way with training data, and then help them target it to the right SOC that we might have. So we're investing a lot in tooling, we're investing a lot in embracing open frameworks, open standards. Um, there's a lot of noise out there. You know, a lot of people talk about AI, we're trying to simplify it, and we're trying to embrace open standards which we think will become more relevant and uh, what we're also trying to do is we're going to try to emphasize open source right so that we can leverage the broader community and find a way to democratize ai at the edge very very cool so when you think about it in that sense there is a lot of optimization that can be done. So how much do you offer in assistance to your clients to help them optimize your solution in their solution? That again depends, uh, will depend on the experience level, you know, of our customers. We are taking an approach where we can make it easier for a broad range of our customers. So it's sort of like a, let them, let be as uh, self-serve of a model as possible. And so we are offering tooling in that regard to make it easier. But we also have a range of partners to build out our ecosystem mm -hmm. so that they can help our customer base and that way we can scale and inflect the industry. So, you know, again, it's a whole range, but we are anticipating um, uh, to, to overcome a lot of this with the right kind of frameworks, with the right kind of tooling, with the right kind of partners so that we can scale.
Very cool. So were there any other aspects of this uh, processor family or your AI solution that we haven't covered that you want to bring out for the audience to emphasize? The only other thing that I will mention, which I'm excited about personally, is, um, you know, all of these silicon products, they have a certain amount of um, AI engines in them. We are taking an approach as we look ahead to emphasize a scalable AI architecture that can go from the very low end to the high end. And because you can imagine that you want to scale the intelligence depending on the product. So we are emphasizing scalable engines and we are emphasizing a way by which uh, we, can in, we can make use of that scalable engine in a much easier fashion across a whole range of products. That we're going to be announcing more, um, uh, there'll be more information coming out in the next uh, three to four months. And um, again, we are taking the approach that we want to make it, you know, completely simple for people to incorporate intelligence at the edge. And I'm excited about that. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us at this event. I really appreciate you having the time for us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.